G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here, and today we're going to show you how you can use a scribble grid or lazy grid or doodle grid to take an image such as this Deadpool here and scale it up to whatever size you wish. In this case, the size of a garage door, which is six foot by nine foot or two by three meters. It's pretty straightforward. There's no complicated geometric grids and rulers with a fair degree of flexibility. We'll also cover some things to take account for when using this technique, and we'll also compare this method to using a projector and some considerations to be aware of. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. So here we painted the garage door completely white and then we come back with the kids and done this scribble grid over the top of it, so just drawing a whole bunch of random shapes, numbers pictures whatever it needs to be then from there taken a photograph and taken into Photoshop and then placed a Deadpool over the top there that's what we're going to be doing so then that one just helps align with where everything is and then also too then done one at 25% opacity in Photoshop so you can sort of see them all the way through now we'll get started and just drawing it all up. So here's the actual grid drawing which I did in Photoshop and there's the actual one so far as it's been blocked out. So I've got my Deadpool base colors blocked in to a good point but just a couple of things to be wary of. If you're using a transparent paint or something which is semi-opaque then it won't cover up everything really well. And then that just becomes down to the way that you paint and things. For me, I like to have everything sort of flat so I can kind of just see the general colors and then build up. So that's good because then when I go to draw all the muscles and details and chest in there, I've still got the underlying grid, which I can then use to take it forward further. Or for some colors like the grays. In this case, if you just do it one layer, you can still see a little bit of the grid underneath. But if you go over it a couple of times, um, like here, it's normally a zigzag there, but because I've gone over that a few times now, you can't see it. So it's all going to come down to the types of paints that you're using and the way that you like to paint. So with this grid layout, I probably haven't gone as tight as what I needed to, just because of the nature of the paneling within the actual sort of garage door itself. It means that you can also use these horizontals and verticals on the actual original transfer sheet. As you can sort of see here, you can see how you can also see those panels on there so they can also help to sort of lay things out and get your proportions and alignments. Still not 100% sure on the background which is nice because then this grid is still going to give me some flexibility to go through and do something later on. And the process can become iterative because here I've taken a photograph of where I was up to and then I've just dropped that into Photoshop and then been able to just play around with some design elements to sort of see then how I want to do the background, which then gives you the flexibility in Photoshop to play around with things. So, you know, I was playing around with the eyes and how I wanted that to go and then different shape circles and then however I wanted that middle part by the head to go there. And because you've already got the scribble grid in the background as a reference, all you need to do then is just print out this and then use this to judge where you're going to put your lines and curves and everything through. And even though in Photoshop I've done relatively perfect ovals and everything like that, even using this sort of a grid enables you to transfer that quite well. So it's really quite flexible for both geometric hard edges and then things which are much more organic and curved like human bodies and muscles and flesh. Then using the scribble grid, this is where you can end up. In the back there, it even helps with the big geometric type ovals and things. I've roughened it up just to match the sort of thing where I want it down the bottom here. So certainly it can be really helpful to get, you know, big geometric shapes and making sure that they're all sort of fit and work in. In the past, I've also used projectors. They can be faster as you're just straight up and down tracing, whereas doodle grids, you still have to take your time to figure out where your lines are crossing, reference marks, how far they go, etc. With projectors, there are four main issues I've experienced. One, during daylight, it can get really hard to see. Even if you have a dark space, it can be really faint. Even with powerful bulbs, i.e. expensive ones, they're still not strong enough. The second one is keeping it aligned. If you move or bump a projector, it can be hard to realign, even when you have some kind of registration marks. It's not impossible, but I've never really found it to be a magic bullet. 
Three, resolution. Even with expensive projectors, the resolution can still be quite low, i.e. you won't get the detail that you might be after. And the fourth one is general practicality, particularly when you're outside dealing with electrical cables and just setting it up, and particularly if you're in a tight space, being able to have a projector back far enough and it's going to be limit you in terms of how big you can go. While I've shown it here used on a mural, it can equally be used on canvases of any size. If you found this useful, only takes a split second to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribing helps to receive notifications of future videos. And if you know of anyone else who might think you're brilliant for sharing this technique with them, feel free to share. Here is a quick Sonic the Hedgehog mural. Alternatively, this is a quick Loki watercolor or a wedding painting I painted live on the day at the venue. Otherwise, you may like this video. That's it from us here at Family Bricks. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time when we talk about all things lifestyle.